Hello students, so I'm going to show you how to make a graphic poster using GIMP. You can either find your own image to be inspired by that's similar. Here's a couple that I found, but this is the one I'm going to show you how to remake. All right, so the first thing that you need to do in GIMP is open up whatever photo that you are kind of copying. In this case, I'm using this one here. And you're going to make a new layer. You can call this new layer reflection because we're going to do the red reflections in the water. Okay, so once you have that layer, pick your color red in the color picker and then get your brush. Make it mostly a soft brush. I'm going to bump this up just a little bit. And let's zoom in so we can see better. You can zoom in at the bottom of your screen there. So you can also use your bracket keys to change the size of the brush. They're just to the right of the P. I kind of start off putting the size over there on the tab and getting it pretty close. I'm going to start off with a 9. All right, and then start brushing in over top of the red on the different layer. And what you want to do, this doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to end up blurring it later, but what you want to do is um, try to paint in some reflections. At the very top of your page, they'll just be thin lines. And it might not look good at first, but once you're done and do some blurring, it'll look fine. So what I usually do is I go around the edges with a thinner brush and try to get the basic shape outlined. And since I'm not going to have that boat in here, I'm just going to go ahead and make up my own shape for that area. It really doesn't matter <clears throat> if it's exactly anyways. I kind of follow it pretty loosely. So just keep going around and do the outside. I'm just going to speed this up now. And if you turn off your background layer and you color in with a thicker brush, it goes a lot faster. So I'm just going to fast forward through here. All right, once I have that filled in, then I can turn my layer on, my background layer, and see how I have my own reflection on a different layer now. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is make another layer. I'm going to call this one Shadows, and we're going to paint like the darker areas in the water. So go up into your color palette and choose a dark bluish color. It's really pretty much almost black. All right, that looks good. And then I get my brush tool and use about a hardness of two. And then just do the same thing. You're going to start filling in, coloring over all the shadows that you see on the original artwork. And once again, you're going to blur it when you're done, so it doesn't matter if your brush is a little bit harder than what they have. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. It's kind of easier to see. So sometimes I'm, you'll see my brush get bigger and smaller without going over to the right side. It's because I'm using the bracket keys. At the top, you want to have some really thin lines, too. So make sure your line width varies a little. All right, so it doesn't have to be perfect, like I said, because you're going to blur it. All right, let's make another layer. Whoops, let me rename this layer. We're going to paint our water and sky and move the layer down below your reflections, obviously. And then get kind of that muted grayish blue color that's going to fill up most of your image. You can do edit, fill with foreground color. All right, so that's what that looks like. We're going to keep it turned off 
um, some of the time while we're working though. All right, we're going to make another layer and we're going to call this one Horizon. And then what you want to do is get your selection tool at the top and drag a box that goes from the top of the sky down to the edge of the water. That's our horizon line. And then we're going to get a color that's a little bit lighter than what we used for the sky and the water. That way there'll be a line you can see and get your paintbrush. This time make it really big. I'm going to go up to 410. And make sure that it's a soft brush. Notice my hardness is only on two. All right, and then just paint a line across the edge there so that you can see the horizon. And then I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit so that it's kind of more of a subtle thing. You'll see me turn off my uh, water sky layer sometimes so I can see what to do. All right, I make a new layer now, and I'm going to call this one Sun. I'm going to get the selection tool that's round. Hold the shift key and drag it so it stays a perfect circle. Then I'm going to get red and go to edit, fill with foreground color. And then I'm going to get a little darker red and get the brush and just kind of brush over the bottom so there's a little bit of a gradient inside the sun. All right, now I want to, let's see, I'm going to move the sun. I find the move tool is buggy in here for me, so I usually get the um, scale tool and then drag from the very center box. If you grab it from the center, you can move it. Usually works better for me. All right, when I turn on my water sky, you can see how everything's looking so far. Now I want to go into my shadows and do a linear motion blur. They don't look very good until you start blurring them. So I'm going to try this. Really, you only need to adjust the length. All right, that was a little more subtle than I wanted. I think it needs to be blurred more. So I'm going to go to Filter Blur, and I'm going to choose the Gaussian Blur. And you can preview it as you're doing it. I'm going to put mine about right here. That looks better. I still think it needs to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to lighten the opacity of this layer. Now I'm going to go on my reflection layer and put the linear motion blur on that layer. So I'm going to pull the length up. Yeah, that looks good. That looks a lot better to me. I'm still not real happy with the shadows, so I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then I'm going to get the scale tool and I'm going to make it bigger. And then grab it by the center to move it. I'm going to move it in a little bit different spot so it's not right on top of what I already have. And I'm going to drag that below the reflection and then lower the opacity on those two so that we kind of have two different color shadows. There's a darker one and one that's not quite as dark. I think it looks a little bit better that way. All right. So the next thing that I want to do, I'm going to lower this a little bit more. I feel like there's still a little too dark. I like the way that looks. All right, now I'm going to open up my fishing boat. You can pick a different file if you want, but I will give you this one if you want. I'm going to copy it and then paste. Then press enter, a new layer. And then I'm going to get the scale tool. I'm going to make them smaller and then grab it by the center box so I can move it. I'll put them right about there. All right, that looks good. What I want to do now is change the color of the boat a little bit. So I don't like the gray, so I'm going to increase the or decrease the brightness rather to make it darker like a silhouette and then bump the contrast up. I want it to look mostly black. That looks good. And then press OK. Now I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to call this one Highlight. I'm going to put a little bit of red highlights on the boat. So I'm going to go back to get my red color again. And I need to zoom in on the Fisher 
fisherman's boat. What you want to do is get the paintbrush and make it a pretty hard brush and very small, very, very, very small, much smaller than that. Still too big. Okay, one is probably fine, maybe a little bit bigger. Oh yeah, I need a little bit bigger, so I'm going to press my bracket keys to enlarge the brush just a little bit. There we go. So what I want to do is just paint a thin red line across the top of the boat. It's very subtle. It's just giving it a little bit of a highlight. And then use that same small brush to do a little line on the top of his hat. A line on the top of his arm. Get the top of his leg. I think this little detail makes a big difference. It makes the painting look a lot better. All right. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to shorten his line. I think it looks a little bit weird being that long. So I'm going to go on the boat layer and I'm get the eraser and just shorten that up a little bit. because I think his fishing pole is a little closer to the water. And then I'm going to get black and the brush and a very small brush. I need to reduce the size down again. Put it about two pixels. I want the brush to be harder. I don't want it to be too soft. So 100% hardness. And I'm just going to draw like this little wavy line where the string is entering, the fishing line is entering the water, little ripple. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put one more picture in there. You guys can either use the same pictures I provide or you can find your own. I got this on Pixabay. Copy that and then paste it. Then I'm going to get the scale tool and make it smaller. Grab it by the center to move it. And then press enter and new layer. All right, and that's how you make a simple graphic poster with GIMP. So the next thing you need to do before you save it is to type your name on there. Oops, my layer is behind there. I need to drag it up on the top. There we go. And then I'm going to get the scale tool and make it a little bit bigger and grab it by the center to move it. Now I am done. Okay, so then you just go to the top, go File, Save. Save the XCF for you because that's an editable file in case you want to change anything later. But don't turn that one in. To turn one in, you need to go to File, Export, and save it as a PNG or a JPEG. Whatever you type there is fine, either one. And you can leave um, all the default settings and then say export. And that is how you make a simple graphic poster in GIMP. You can either copy mine or you can make one of your own or make some edits to customize it.